Now I'm going to start building this header by cutting out this flange as it bolts to the head. Uh, and you can see right here, I've got a manifold gasket. This is just one of the spare heads I've got laying around. You can see it makes quite a good pattern. So years ago, I transferred this pattern onto cardboard. You can see it's quite yellowed and old, and that's because this project has gotten mothballed several times over the years. While I was uh, building other projects for other people and for myself, so this is the pattern I had from way back. And, you know, it's crazy how you can pick right back up where you left off with a project. And this feels like it was yesterday. But anyway, I made this pattern a long time ago and I marked all the centers of the holes. So you can see right there and made a little small hole. And then I just transferred that pattern onto this metal by center punching all the holes. And these holes right here, these uh, three eighths, I think those are, I drilled those years ago. So I'm just now getting started on the larger holes that's gonna be for the exhaust ports. Now you can see that this pattern is quite a lot shorter than the manifold gasket right there. And that's because I deleted that hole and that hole. Those are for the intake. So I'm not going to need those on my header. So I just uh, scrunched it all up onto this piece of metal so as not to waste any material. And when I get done, you know, drilling these large holes out, then I will go back and slice it right through that mounting hole right there. And we can take a peek right over here at the intake manifold and you can see that that mounting point right there will tighten down on the intake and the exhaust header so you can see how that goes together so i just picked up a fresh hole saw yesterday and i'm going to get started cutting these holes out and hopefully i'll get through all these holes and still I uh, have plenty of hole saw left. Hopefully it won't burn it all up, but uh, I think I can make it through. This is three eighths inch thick. I believe uh, it should uh, cut those out all right. So I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll find out. Okay, I've got all the exhaust ports cut out there. Now, as you can see, they turned out really nice. Right here is the Linux hole saw that I used. It's just a cheapo that I picked up at Lowe's yesterday. You can pick these up at just about any hardware store like uh, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, Menards, places like that. Um, like I said, it's just a cheapo uh, kind of, uh, you know, Joe homeowner quality, you know, kind of a DIY type of a, a deal there. Uh, and if you've ever used one of these very much, you know that they kind of have a tendency to walk around a little bit. So, uh, you know, they wobble. And if you're not careful, you can, you can make the hole in whatever it is you're cutting way larger than you really intended for it to be. So I didn't use the pilot bit like I first intended. Uh, and that is because after I put this in, uh, you know, my drill press, I could see that it had some natural wobble to it. So rather than using the pilot bit, I cut out a uh, guide right here just out of a piece of scrap metal. And, uh, you know, I didn't make it super tight on the, on the uh, whole saw, but just enough to let it work freely, but yet guide it straight. And uh, before I clamped it down into the drill press right there, I just used those um, marks where I had uh, used the punch and marked my center point of that hole right there and, uh, you know, marked out the hole. And then I knew exactly where to put the guide on here. It worked out really nice. Uh, so what I did is I just went really slow with the hole saw and uh, kept it uh, lubed up with some cutting oil. And they'll, they'll last a really long time that way. So I cut all four of those big holes right there with that inch and five eighths hole saw and you know just kept it cool and it's still that's that hole saw still got a lot of life left in it so i've already got one installed over here on the engine you can see 
I'll probably go in here and cut these corners off just to, I don't know, just to clean it up a little bit, just make it look a little nicer. And now I will cut those other two out and I'll be ready to start installing the tubes. Okay, it's the moment of truth on this last one right here. And it looks like it fits perfectly. I think that's the that's the best fitting one yet. Don't look like I'm gonna have to do any trimming or any modification. Had to had to uh, do a little bit of filing on a couple of the holes right there on these, but that one fits perfectly. All right, one more thing left to do, and that is to check the clearance on the manifold right here. And look at that, that is absolutely perfect. So while I'm bolting this on here, I'll tell you a little bit about this intake manifold. I think this is the one I'm gonna use. I have a Clifford uh, intake manifold also, but I think this is the one that I'm gonna use, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Uh, this is the Mercruiser intake. Well, what's left of it anyway. So when I got this uh, head, I also got the uh, intake manifold with it. I actually got the whole engine. It was a, an engine that someone had uh, neglected to winterize, so the engine block was cracked. But I was able to salvage the head, and that's what I wanted anyway, because this head bumps the engine up 30 horsepower just uh, by bolting that head on. Anyway, this intake manifold was the original Mercruiser manifold. But if you've ever seen one, and I'll try to find a picture on the internet to uh, throw up here to show you, they are a huge monstrosity. It's got all the uh, water jackets, cooling jackets and stuff uh, on there. And the exhaust ports are all cast together with the intake manifold and it's water cooled. And if, if you don't know anything about boats, they just scoop up water and they cool the engine with the lake water and it travels through those water passages and uh, cools the engine. So after I got the, the head, I took the intake manifold off of it. And I was kind of shopping for an intake manifold, but I thought somewhere in that chunk of metal, there's an intake manifold. So I just started cutting off the water jackets and this is what I was left with after I got done cutting it down. And the reason I decided that this is the one I think I'm gonna use is if you look right up underneath there, you can see that it has an upsweep to it uh, where the Clifford just kind of a, it's a big horseshoe bend right here. Well, that gives you extra clearance right here for your exhaust. If you want to do lake style headers, you can come straight out here like this. Uh, whereas the Clifford would block those. So I think this is the one I'm going to use right here. Well, my parts come in today from Speedway. Let's open this up and see what we got. Ordered some um, some pre-bent uh, pieces right here. You can see right there, it's got a 90-degree elbow on that end, and it's got kind of a, a U shape right there. Inch and five eighths. Ordered uh, four of these. They're not too expensive. They're about 17 bucks a piece. Trying to get it out of the plastic. This is just uh, mild steel. It's hard to do and hold the camera too. So there's what that looks like. So I may have to I may have to use this end right here and cut it off there, or I may be able to slice that into and get uh, two elbows right there. And then have some more left over. I wasn't sure how many it'd take. It's, it um, may just take um, two of these to do one set of headers. But I ordered enough uh, to do at least one set, maybe two, I hope. 
And I ordered a collector right here. That's a two into one collector. And I ordered a set of flanges. Oh, my bad, I ordered two collectors. So potentially I'm, I'm gonna try to build two of these because I got two, two of those uh, engines and I may eventually put um, one in something else. So who knows? I tried to get enough to build two uh, headers. We'll see. The first thing I'm gonna do right here is cut this uh, 180 degree bend right in the middle. And that'll give me two 90 degree elbows. I'm hoping that, that this will have enough clearance around the engine. I'm not sure how much that'll be, about a, maybe three inches to the back side of that 90 right there. So I'm hoping that'll be uh, enough clearance. So only way to find out is to cut this right here and then I'll try this one right here and see. So here's a good little trick that I use often. Uh, if you're wanting to get a straight cut around tubing or get a straight mark so that you can cut your tubing, uh, just uh, put a zip tie on there and then that'll give you a good straight edge to mark around the tubing. Okay, I've just taken the intake manifold out of the way just so I can get in here and work. I've got my header flanges bolted down and I'm gonna start by fitting these center tubes right here. <clears throat> now you can see, I can't go straight down because of the motor mount right there. So the plan is to angle these back just a little bit. So I was a little bit worried about um, hitting this uh, flange right here on the motor. So um, uh, right there is just square with the head, but I think I can just angle that back just a little bit like that and that'll be fine. So that'll put the, the header dump in about right here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tack that in right there and then I'll start working on this other one. The general idea, what I'm gonna do right here is dump these two right here together and then I will Y this side in with that pipe and this one in with this pipe just before it goes into the collector, kind of like the old try wire headers that uh, you used to could buy. Okay, I got that first tube tacked in right there and I moved right on into the second one. Now, I've made a preliminary mark right here and that's gonna be about where the uh, collector starts. So now I'm gonna move on over here to this number four cylinder and start fitting it. It is gonna wire right into this pipe right here, right before it dumps in the collector. And the same with the number one cylinder up here. So I'm gonna get started fitting this one next. Now I've started fitting this uh, number four cylinder right here. And you can see uh, the shape that I've cut into that uh, pipe. I made it a little extra long and I'm just uh, getting close with the bandsaw where I want to be and then I'll just break out the grinder and start fine-tuning that shape until it fits just perfectly saddled of that uh, pipe. After I get that perfectly fitted and saddled around this pipe right here, I'll mark it out and then I'll cut the hole into this pipe right here and then I'll repeat the process with the number one cylinder up here in the front. All right, I'm getting really close and you can see the shape uh, that it's taken right there. Still got a little bit of a gap right there on the sides. So I'm going to just keep on uh, grinding at those valleys and uh, relieve those a little bit. And that will allow the pipe to rotate. It needs to rotate just a little bit more and it'll bring those sides on in tighter. So we're getting real close though. So that's pretty close to what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm getting ready to cut the number one cylinder pipe right here. And I just thought I'd show you this. Uh, this is uh, part two of that trick I showed you earlier with the cable tie. Hose clamps work really nice too. And I prefer to use those on straight pipe. But in the curve of that 90, that uh, wire tie is just, you know, it's just a little narrow thing and it fits nicely in that curve where this one is uh, 
you know, that's probably about a half inch wide and it doesn't sit too well in that curve. So there's you another little tech tip. Well, I've ran into my first setback right here. I was doing the final fit up on this front tube and I had taken the intake manifold out of the way to, to work on it. And you can see how much gap I've got right there. And that's because it's interfering with the intake manifold right there on the front. Now I took the intake manifold off and actually ground off a little bit right there because it's in a place where uh, it's not real thin and there's quite a bit of material there. So I took off a little bit right there. I don't want to take off a whole lot. So I got one of two choices here. I could either redo this whole part right here or I can cheat a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is mark that uh, place right there where it's interfering, and I'll just uh, use a socket probably and knock a little divot in the side of that, uh, just a little dent, and uh, cheat just a little bit right there. And I'll try to do better next time. Y'all, I am stoked about how this is turning out. Everything uh, fits really nice. Had that little bit of interference problem right there. I took a socket and laid it down on its side and, and kind of tapped it so I'd have a nice little round indent, indention right there. And I uh, had to clearance some on the bottom of the intake manifold just a little bit. But overall, everything's looking really nice. Good tight fitment right there on my pipes. And uh, I'm just about ready to weld everything up. Last piece of the puzzle, I took the collector right here, shortened it down a little bit. I've got it tacked on, got the flange tacked on the bottom right there. And it will look like that. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the way this has turned out so far. Now on to welding everything up. Hey y'all, unfortunately I'm gonna to have to end the video right there because just as I was finishing tacking up those pieces together, my welder started acting up on me again. So I didn't get to finish welding the header up. And honestly, I just ran out of time this weekend. So it's back to work tomorrow. I hope y'all got to spend some wrenches this weekend. Hopefully by the next time I do an update on the BLT, I uh, will have the header all welded up and you can see that in the next episode. So uh, until then, y'all get out there and build something.